Hey guys, it's Rob Sipek with Paperless X, a channel that is all about the paperless life. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing OneNote to GoodNotes 5. Let's start with the price. OneNote is a free note-taking application from Microsoft. It is available across all devices via your OneDrive Microsoft account. You can work offline and sync your content and you can always access it from any device that you pick even if it's not your own. Before watching this comparison, I would recommend you watch the complete review on OneNote and also on GoodNotes 5. I will put links to those videos in the description down below. GoodNotes 5 costs $8. It is a one-time purchase for your iPad and it also has a Mac version which you purchase for a separate fee. GoodNotes 5 syncs across your devices via iCloud. It is not available on Windows and Android, which is a shame really. For pricing, I give a point to OneNote and another point for availability on different devices. The organization in OneNote has a three-level hierarchy system. You get your notebooks, which then have different sections and those sections in turn have different pages and your pages can have sub pages. GoodNotes 5 has a multiple level organization system which allows you to create an infinite number of folders within folders. This will give you more control on how you organize your notes and store them. GoodNotes 5 even allows you to bookmark your documents, pages and folders as favorites if you use them a lot for easier access. You can arrange your notes according to date or according to name in GoodNotes 5. And the application gives your notes a list or a thumbnail view, whichever you prefer. And so this point goes to GoodNotes 5. To start using the application in OneNote, let's create a notebook. You can select what color you want for your notebook. Once your notebook is created, it already has a section and a page. And you can easily rename this. By default, all pages in OneNote need to be labeled. Otherwise, you will end up having a lot of untitled pages, which will make it difficult for you to find your notes. So this page naming, this section naming as well, it serves as an outline for your notes. And once you've created your notebook, your canvas is ready. In GoodNotes 5, you can do a lot in the home page. You can create a quick note with one tap. If you're in a hurry and have no time to organize your notebook, this is very handy. You can import documents via the files application and you can import multiple documents even. You can take a photo or a scan of documents. You can add an image or a new folder and then you can create a notebook. When creating a notebook, you can choose the cover you want for your notebook. You can pick the page size you want and the application supports A4 to A3 paper sizes. You can pick a color you want for your pages, white, yellow or dark mode. You can have portrait or landscape page orientations when you create your notebook. And you can name your notebook. The pages in OneNote come with grids and rules that you can play around with three different spacing options for your pages and 16 colors, but that's about it. Not a lot of page customization in OneNote. GoodNotes gives you more options when creating your notebooks, all which you can ignore if you want, but you have the options. I will give this point to GoodNotes 5. Creating notebooks is much simpler in OneNote though. If you prefer a more minimalist approach to document creation, you will love this. The kinds of notes you create in these two applications are very different. OneNote offers you an infinite canvas, but GoodNotes 5 has fixed page sizes. The beauty of digital notes is the ability to free ourselves of limitations we get when using paper. In that respect, OneNote's infinite canvas shines. If really all you want to do is just write and connect dots without the limitations that come with fixed paper sizes, you will definitely love OneNote. In OneNote, you can create massive mind maps and massive documents. This is a great idea for brainstorming. In OneNote, you can just write and keep writing. The challenge arises when you want to share your notes. Typically, the best way to share your notes in OneNote is to collaborate with people using OneNote as well. You can allow people to edit your notes by turning on this can edit option. 
other than that sharing your notes with other applications or with people not using OneNote is very difficult you will need to figure out a way to keep your canvas to known paper sizes in order to share decent notes with other people on the ipad this is a mission impossible it is simply not worth the hustle if you have no intention of sharing of ever sharing your notes with anyone or if you only work with OneNote and everybody else around you is using OneNote then OneNote is definitely a better option the infinite canvas is an amazing feature so much that it's really the reason to pick one note over any other note-taking application that and the fact that it's free of course goodnotes 5's largest paper size is an a3 paper which is twice as big as the 12.9 inch ipad pro screen the different paper sizes in goodnotes 5 will work best for different situations this is a good setup if you want to export your notes to other applications if you want to share those notes with people using different applications you can easily do that in goodnotes 5 difficult to decide which application should get this point but whichever application you think deserves this point is definitely the application you should should be going for. Since you create notes in OneNote, which you will probably never share with anyone, it makes more sense to use the application in doc mode. Fascinating thing about OneNote is that it is the only third-party handwriting note-taking application supporting true doc mode. That means your colors are automatically converted when you switch to doc mode. OneNote is a Microsoft application. We wouldn't accept anything less from them. In GoodNotes 5, switching your iPad to dark mode doesn't convert your page templates, colors, or ink. So if you're to create notes in GoodNotes 5 in dark mode, you will need the dark mode paper templates to go with it. And this will be very difficult if you're going to be sharing your notes. I don't think a lot of us are accustomed to having notes on dark paper, on black paper. This is something that we're still warming up to. So yeah. And if you change your application to light mode, your notes will not change. So essentially at this point, dark mode in GoodNotes 5 only applies to the user interface of the application. And so for having true dark mode i think this point should go to one note the text tool in OneNote can only be compared to that in microsoft word or other word processors the application has Microsoft compatible fonts and iOS fonts compared to that in GoodNotes 5 which only has a handful functions like strikeout style templates interactive checklists and tags make GoodNotes text tool look like a joke. GoodNotes 5 already has the worst text tool offered by any note-taking application. Comparing it to OneNote is just cruel. GoodNotes 5 doesn't let you do much with your text. You can add a background color to it, a border to your text, and that's it. If your work involves a lot of text, then you are better off with OneNote. OneNote not only works as your note-taking application, but it also works as your filing system of sorts. That's because you can add a lot of things to your notes in OneNote. Tables, photos, audio, files, though they have to be less than 100 megabytes. PDFs, web links, equations, dates, stickers, meeting details from Outlook, and research content from online. Very few note-taking applications support tables. I appreciate the feature in every application that has it. Though I wish they could make it easier so that we don't have to rely on using the toolbar to add columns and rows to our tables, I wish that this application could just implement a drag and add feature. This tables feature is a feature that I hope to see added to more and more note-taking applications because tables are very important. I have to say, typing an equation is great. Writing it seems a lot easier though. It's a great tool to have for those that need it, I guess. But I always find, personally, for equations, I prefer to write them in. The fact that you can add files to OneNote means you can add any file really, as long as it is less than 100 megabytes. This is great because even if OneNote can't open the file for you, you can still store it there and open it with the relevant application when you need it. This might help you to keep all your stuff together in one place if you really want to have a centralized place to keep all your files in. Though I would say there are better ways to organize your documents and your files if you can't open them in an application. I find the audio recording tool in OneNote pointless. What's the use of having the feature if I can't write anything while the application is recording? Um, so definitely for your iPad, this audio recording feature is not useful. OneNote offers more things that you can insert to your notes. 
OneNote doesn't support the scan documents feature in iPad OS. GoodNotes has this feature. And this is something that's very interesting that I noticed. Is it enough to be a deal breaker for OneNote? Definitely not. OneNote has the best ballpoint pen I have seen in any note-taking application. I am mostly a fountain human. Ballpoints in all note-taking applications don't do it for me. All except one. The one in OneNote is great. This is one ballpoint pen I can actually use to write decent notes. That's how amazing the inking tool in OneNote is. I hope they can add more pen sizes. If an application is going to offer fixed pen sizes, then it should at least have a decent number. Five is simply not enough. Besides that, I like how OneNote lets you save a lot of templates on your toolbar so they're just readily available for you to pick them up. This is really handy. GoodNotes 5 offers three pen types, a ballpoint brush and fountain pen. I prefer the fountain pen. The application lets you set three template colors readily available on your toolbar and three size templates. Your pen sizes range in size from 0.1 to 2 millimeters. I personally do not like this millimeter option because then it means I need to remember what millimeters work for me. I prefer fixed pen sizes, but anyway, yeah. But definitely you get more pen sizes and more versions and variants in GoodNotes 5 than you do in OneNote. Both applications have amazing highlighters and so no winner there. GoodNotes 5 has a smoother eraser. It is much more pleasant to erase things in GoodNotes 5 than it is in OneNote. The eraser in OneNote certainly needs some improvements. Both applications have the option to erase per pixel and per stroke. GoodNotes 5 has three sizes for your eraser versus the one in OneNote that only has one. GoodNotes 5 has the option to erase just the highlighter and this is a very useful feature because there are times when I just want to erase only the highlighter and not everything else and I find this very very useful. In GoodNotes 5, you can also auto deselect the eraser. So after you've erased a section, the application automatically switches back to the tool you were using before. If you're only going to be using the eraser to erase something once, it's great. If you're going to want to erase multiple things, this can be a bit annoying. So one point to GoodNotes 5. Both applications have basic shapes tools. OneNote has fixed templates you can use to draw your shapes. And it also has the ability to straighten out shapes you draw freely. I don't really get the logic, but okay. GoodNotes 5 has the option to autofill your shapes, which OneNote doesn't have. I guess that's, a, that's worth a point. Of the two applications, GoodNotes 5 has the superior lasso tool. You can decide what your lasso tool picks up in GoodNotes 5 and therefore you can set it to pick up just one thing at a time. Your lasso tool can pick up just your handwriting, your images only, or your text boxes only. And of course, everything all at once. By default, you pick up everything in OneNote, unless if you have set your pictures and PDFs as backgrounds. In that case, those parts are immovable. Remember, anything you set as a background is immovable. A point to GoodNotes 5. OneNote has the option to insert space between sections of your notes. This works great because of the infinite canvas in OneNote. It's not a feature that works well with fixed pages. A lot of you guys have mentioned and requested this feature from note-taking applications like Notability and GoodNotes 5. I don't see how that's possible to insert space on a fixed page, which is why you only get this feature in OneNote and in Apple's Notes application. So in OneNote, you can insert space horizontally and vertically. Just move everything to the right if you want to create space on your left. Both applications will search your handwriting, but they have a very different approach to handwriting recognition. OneNote has the immersive reader. This converts all your notes temporarily just to read them out to you. Once you exit this mode, your notes are not changed. They are still handwritten. GoodNotes 5 on the other hand converts your handwriting and gives you the ability to replace your handwritten sections. This is the traditional handwriting conversion we are accustomed to and it's what most of us expect when we think about handwriting recognition in a note-taking application. I will give this point to GoodNotes 5. GoodNotes 5 still needs to work on their tool though because copying and pasting the conversion then deleting the handwritten section is simply too much work. The application should give us the ability to replace the handwritten sections with just one tap.
OneNote can password protect sections in your notes. Be careful not to forget the password though, because if you do, you won't be able to recover things that you've password protected. GoodNotes 5 has no password protection for anything in your notes. This point goes to OneNote. I like the percentage that shows on your page when you zoom in and out of a note checking application. It is really important for me to know how zoomed in I am on a page in case I want to go back to it. GoodNotes doesn't have this. It's very difficult when you zoom in and out in Zoom Notes to get it back exactly where it was before every time you change it. GoodNotes 5 has a presentation mode. This comes with a laser tool. It will help you to point out parts of your presentations and make some drawings or, you know, draw some attention or emphasis on certain parts of your presentations. This mode also gives you the ability to hide your user interface during your presentations. All these tools are really unnecessary for your audience to see. I think it's really good that you can hide your user interface from your audience and your audience only gets to see the document you're talking about and they don't have to see you switching different tools and all that. OneNote has a sticky note feature. If you have anything important that needs to be done in OneNote, you can just create a sticky note for it and you can quickly access this by tapping the sticky note icon, a point to OneNote. OneNote has a research feature. Frankly, this still needs more work. It really needs to be worked on because it has a lot of limitations at this point, but an in-app browser is always a welcome idea. What is cool about this feature is that you can extract information from your search results with one tap. The websites you can access from this browser though are very limited and there's no customization available to improve this at this point. Right now, I'm reluctant to give a point for this because at the moment, I feel like it is so bad it's practically not functional at all. I found it very difficult to make use of it at all. I, think I can't even easily search the definition of a word for example. GoodNotes 5 is a better PDF annotating application. I did a review of GoodNotes 5 as a PDF reader and I recommend you watch that video because it will give you all the details you need to know about GoodNotes as a PDF reader. I will link that video in the description down below. One of the main reasons why GoodNotes 5 is such a great PDF reader versus OneNote is that it recognizes outlines and it actually lets you create outlines. In GoodNotes 5, you can import any PDF size you want and you can add pages between your PDF pages. OneNote doesn't import PDFs that are bigger than 50 megabytes. This PDF that I edited was 30 megabytes and it took ages to get a printout copy of this PDF into my OneNote. I did this again with a much smaller file, 8 megabytes, and it still took a very long time to load a printout copy of this in the application. OneNote doesn't recognize outlines. Navigating PDFs in OneNote is a massive pain. It is manual and you will have to scroll through each and every page because the application doesn't even give you thumbnails of your PDFs. OneNote is an application that you use to navigate small PDF documents. Anything that is huge, anything that's large is probably a bad idea. The PDF is superimposed onto the canvas, which makes it movable, which is quite distracting. Uh, you have to set it as a background and that makes it immovable, which personally I expect of all my PDFs. I don't know about you, but yeah, for me, PDFs shouldn't move around on a page. Why are they doing that? OneNote as a PDF is a bad idea. The application doesn't even support hyperlinks. It has the worst PDF annotating capabilities I have seen in any note taking application. A point for GoodNotes 5. Though you can add files to OneNote, you can't really use them. GoodNotes 5 converts your Word and PowerPoint documents to PDFs for annotation. OneNote just stores a copy which you can review or open in Word or PowerPoint application depending on which application you're using. This is useless for a note-taking application, really. OneNote's approach to this is that of a file managing application than it is of a note-taking application. Microsoft probably did this on purpose to advertise their other applications, which makes sense if you use Microsoft Office 365. This will not be a problem, but still, I don't understand why they would allow me to add files I can't work on in the application. So I will give this point to GoodNotes 5. It's more useful to add your documents, your Word or PowerPoint presentations. It's more useful to do it in GoodNotes 5. GoodNotes 5 has more setting options than, than OneNote. You don't get any settings at all in the iPad version of OneNote and even the Windows version doesn't really have much customization. But GoodNotes lets you customize so much. You can select the following things in GoodNotes. Your language for handwriting recognition. Toolbar position. Scrolling direction. 
how you open new tabs in the application. And so GoodNotes 5 deserves a point. It's funny how we've crucified GoodNotes 5 in the past for lack of auto backup. OneNote doesn't have any backup options. It only syncs. It seems applications can do just fine without backup because I've never really thought about this before and I've never really had a problem with OneNote not having a backup. What do you guys think about this? Is backing up overrated? Even though you can't automatically back up your notes in GoodNotes 5, you can manually back them up whenever you remember to do it. So I think I will give this point to GoodNotes 5. At least it has the option to back up your notes. OneNote doesn't support multiple instances in iPadOS. You can only split view it with another application and not with itself. GoodNotes 5 on the other hand has embraced multiple instances and multitasking in GoodNotes 5 works like a charm. I mean, I love the fact that I can open the same notebook twice in GoodNotes 5. A point to GoodNotes 5. And that brings me to the end of this video. What do you guys think about these two applications? Which application do you think is better and which application are you most likely to use? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys are interested in more comparison videos, let me know which applications I should compare next. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.